Hello, I'm Tristan. The Amazon Echo Show is a really useful device. It has a touchscreen which makes it really easy to manage your smart home, play music and even surf YouTube. But this sometimes has a downside. If YouTube is playing and your children are nearby, one moment it'll be playing Blippi, you'll then quickly turn around and five seconds later it's playing Slipknot. Well, that's actually probably not the worst thing it could be playing, but you know, you get my point. The touchscreen makes it a bit too easy for anyone to just surf YouTube and play random videos. It's also not helped by the fact that your children can just say Alexa. open YouTube and YouTube will then appear as if by magic. Ready for then for tiny little fingers to scroll and choose whatever videos they want. Thankfully, there's a better way. Uh, open YouTube. No, go away. <laughs> just kidding. But there thankfully are effective ways that you can either make a YouTube kid safe or you can block standard YouTube completely and instead have YouTube kids running on your Echo Show. Let's dive into how to do this. I'll start by showing how to enable YouTube kids on the Echo Show, but sometimes from experience this can be a bit buggy or slow. So at the end of this video I'll then cover how to sort of childproof standard YouTube instead. Right. So the first thing to know is that the Echo Show is not app-based. You can't just uninstall YouTube and install YouTube Kids, like you can with a Android or iOS phone. The Echo Show uses some fairly custom and proprietary software. And the main way that you access internet stuff, to use the technical term, is via a bundled web browser. This used to be Firefox, but now it's Amazon Silk. And thankfully, YouTube Kids isn't just a mobile app. It's also a website available at youtubekids.com. So enabling YouTube Kids is mainly just a case of opening the web browser by saying Alexa. open silk, then type in youtubekids.com into the address bar. Oh yeah, you then need to sign in, which is a really, really buggy and annoying process and it might make you cry. So when you first go to YouTube Kids, you'll notice that the layout is broken. Thankfully, you can fix this by hitting the desktop icon to the right of the address bar. Then it's simply a case of following the instructions on screen, which involves firstly watching a video, signing into your YouTube Google account, then the web page crashing and you having to start all over again. Seriously, I'm not joking. After logging in, the web page will probably show a blank white box. You then have to refresh the page and start over again, meaning you then need to watch the same video again. But thankfully, the second time around, the YouTube Kids login process should work, allowing you to then get onto the screen where you can enter your children's details and set up the kids portion of things. After what feels like an eternity, you will finally be on YouTube Kids and your children can surf it freely. And you can be safe in the knowledge that there aren't any not safe for work videos there. Naturally, it's still worth monitoring that your children are, you know, what they're watching and flagging any videos they don't feel are acceptable. But it's still good to have enabled YouTube Kids on your Echo Show. It's probably the safest approach. Enjoy watching Blippi and Dave and Ava, kids and parents. But of course, there's a downside. Your children can still say, Alexa. open YouTube or simply select standard YouTube from the bookmarks and then they're back to watching Slipknot or whatever kids do these days. So how can you stop this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a cunning four-point plan to build back better. Sorry about my terrible American accent there. There's four things you can do to block standard YouTube on your Echo Show. So firstly, you can remove the bookmark by uh, clicking the little bookmark icon next to the address bar, then clicking on the YouTube bookmark itself and then press in remove bookmark. It'll then ask you to confirm your choice. This will make it much harder for your children to open standard YouTube on your Echo Show because the option is no longer there, of course. Next up, we need to then stop Echo Show from opening YouTube when someone says Alexa, open YouTube. This is also simple to do via an Alexa routine in the app. So if you launch your Alexa app, click the more menu at the bottom and then routines, press the plus icon to add a new routine. You'll then want to trigger here where someone basically says open YouTube, so that should be a trigger. Next, we then want to hijack this basically. So add an action and choose customize, enter open silk, select the device you spoke to and then hit save. What this all actually means is that when you, it'll open the silk web browser instead of YouTube when someone says Alexa. open YouTube. Open YouTube. 
Here is Silk. Score! I'm so cool. Moving on. It's now harder for your, YouTube, for your children to access standard YouTube, which is great. But it's still available in the browser history, meaning that it'll still show up in the address bar. So you'll want to also clear this by opening Silk, the browser, then clicking the bookmarks icon and then clicking settings. Select privacy and security and then, cle and then click clear browsing history. After doing this, the standard YouTube won't appear anywhere on your Echo Show. This hopefully should be enough for most people, but if you have an Eero or a similar capability router, you could of course look to block m.youtube.com completely, basically blocking access to standard YouTube. In the Eero app, for example, you can even block m.youtube.com just from specific devices, such as only your Amazon Echo devices by using profiles. I won't cover the exact process here because it varies per router, but this could be worth exploring. Now that should be all you need to do to fully enable YouTube Kids and block standard YouTube. But what happens if YouTube Kids is too slow or buggy on your Echo Show? It is on one of my two Echo Shows, weirdly. Well, in this case, you'll unfortunately need to go back to the standard YouTube. But thankfully, there are some steps you can take to make this safer for your children. The first thing you'll need to do is sign in. This is because by default, YouTube is logged out, so it can't as easily sort of learn what videos to suggest. So to log in, click the person icon in the top, the top right, enter your email address and password, and within a few seconds, you should hopefully be logged in. This process should be much smoother than the annoying YouTube kids login process that made me cry earlier on. Now, the video recommendation should be a bit more tailored to you or your children. You might even want to go and actually register a specific account for your children to use on YouTube instead of them using, you know, your own one. Next up, now that you've signed in, you can enable restricted mode, which will screen out mature content. This is a really crucial step. To do this, click the person icon at the top, then scroll down to settings. Next, click account and then toggle the restricted mode option to be on. Naturally, there's a warning here that no filter is 100% accurate, but this should hopefully be good enough to filter out really inappropriate and not safe for work content. Thirdly, since you are now signed in, you should start flagging up any videos or channels that are inappropriate by clicking on the three dots next to a video or a channel recommendation. At first, this can be really repetitive, but YouTube will soon learn exactly what type of videos and channels you do and don't want to see. Fourthly, you should start actually watching children's videos on this Echo Show. Yes, I know that you probably don't want to watch Dave and Ava for a thousandth time, but viewing videos is a really important way that YouTube learns what videos to recommend to your children, for example. You should only need to watch the first few seconds. So if you know that your children love certain channels, search for them and then watch a few of their videos. You might also want to subscribe to those channels, just like you subscribe to my channel, right? Right? since this will of course help tailor the YouTube video recommendations. The benefits of logging into YouTube on the Echo Show instead of leaving it logged out is that all of the settings and recommendations that you've just made will be stored against the account, not the Echo Show. So if you purchase another Echo Show in the future, you can sign in there too, and the recommendations and the settings should be child safe there too. And that just about wraps up today's video. I love my two Echo Show devices and the ease of access of YouTube is useful, but also a bit of a worry. So I hope that the tips I've shown in today's video have helped you. If they have, please click the thumbs up button, which will tell YouTube that more people should see this video. Please also consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the bell icon, which will notify you when I release new videos. Thank you.